Good day everyone, this is Max and welcome to the tips, tricks, tutorial for your first 30 days in Mr. Prepper. Now in this case we're going to do the tips, uh, tricks and tutorial here in the beta version phase 3. Though these tips and tricks for your first 30 days are very relevant even into the new, uh, into the soon to be new release. So let's get into Mr. Prepper and let's get talking about all the tips tricks and all the things you can do to make your first 30 days count really really good a few items to cover first of course to make this video means it's heavy spoiler territory um, I don't want to ruin this for anyone so turn back if you're the adventurer type and want to discover all of this yourself uh, of course these tips and tricks are for those who are getting stuck or having a hard time uh, also, these methods are mine from playing through the game and the demo and the prologue and the beta and going through for about 60 hours at this point of time recording. Uh, but there's no real wrong way to play the game or no wrong play style. So even though my, uh, my farming tips and my hunting are kind of radical, um, this just is out there to help others and uh, of course the timestamps are below and some extra notes can be found down in the description and comments. Also, feel free to leave tips below or questions. I'll try to answer some or let others answer them. So let's get to the video. The biggest tip I could give anybody playing this game is routine. Make part of your day your daily routine of eating, getting trades, and then getting more food. Now in this particular case, I've already eaten, but in this case, I'm now going to actually prep food for the next day. That way I'm not coming home uh, late at night and having to worry about trying to cook some food up for the next morning. The food's already gonna be there, I'm just gonna wake up the next morning and I'm going to eat. The next thing is trades. Always deal with trading. Trading is going to be the backbone of this game for you. Making sure that you have all your trades going all the time is what's going to be the difference between you having enough resources to do the next thing you want and you not having enough money, resources, or food and then passing out, getting caught by the agent, or just having a really hard time with the game. In this particular case, we'll be working with uh, Sergey here a lot, buying his material, making sure that we're selling Nancy as much as she can take, and then later moving on to Jenny and the Huntress to make sure they get the materials they want. Because Jenny's gonna be your big money maker later on in the 30 days with the Huntress uh, somewhat close behind, but Nancy, for the first several days especially, is going to be your big money maker. And we want to keep pushing these levels up as much as possible. We want these people to be trusting us because they give us more material for less money. And that material will come just as you're needing it for other adventures. So make sure you're doing that. The third thing you want to do when it comes to the overall tips of the game about routine is get into the forest and get your food for the next day. So don't be waiting around, um, especially in the early days, you're going to have to be doing this every single day. Once you have a little bit of stash built up, you can use that stash to use an extra day to get ahead on other things such as extra mining or extra crafting or something else along which you can use a whole day to actually get stuff done. But don't be wasting your time trying to do other stuff if you haven't got food ready for the next morning to be prepped. And you want to be collecting them berries as much as possible. We're going to get into berries here in a little bit, but for now, your routine should be always the same every day, which is eat and prep your food for the next day, then do your trades, and then collect your morning food and then head back home. So in this case, I can now head back home and I've got enough food to craft more food the next morning after I've eaten. So that way I'm always good with food. Now this section is all about house tips. 
In this particular case, let's have a look at the house and just how you can make it better and faster for yourself in them first 30 days. First, don't destroy the whole house. It's a really bad move. Uh, one of the things, of course, you can do with your house is you can actually grab stuff and recycle it. Sounds great, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not great at all. First of all, you have to replace this stuff, okay? There's nothing free. Uh, when the agent comes around, and if he doesn't find certain things in the household, you're going to be in big trouble. So in this case, the agent is actually checking out looking for certain items and if he doesn't find them items you got a problem so the next thing is is that if you did take too much from your house you have to then get stuff and replace it and that's a big hassle the next thing about the house is you need to work the trades anyway so don't tear your whole house apart when really you should be trying to buy as much as you can from the people in the neighborhood so you can keep working their levels of trust up to get those max levels and you can't get max levels if you're wasting your time tearing your whole house apart recycling it uh, recycling also takes up a lot of decrafting time and then if you if you've taken too much and the agents upset you have to craft more of it back which takes even more time use your time wisely don't tear the whole house apart because it's better to work your trades and get stuff that way. Next, watch your water and your power usage. You wouldn't think of it, but later on, especially as towards the later days come in, your power usage and your water usage are big hassles that the agent will watch for. In fact, as the game goes on, just imagine everything in this house is searchable. So he will tear this whole house apart. And if he doesn't like what he sees, he starts marking things down. So watch your power, watch your water. Make sure that you're not doing too much of anything. Now, with water, uh, we're going to talk about farming here and the farming tips in a bit. Uh, and we'll talk about how you don't get caught using too much water. And when it comes to power, well, you can actually right click and turn off all these different devices that are using power. This will at least hold you over until the late part of the 30 days when you can finally start working on building your own generator. At this point though, you're not gonna have those options and you're gonna need the lights for farming. So to handle that, right click on all these turn off the power this will get your power meter below the indicator line and make it a lot easier for you like these cupboards i'll bet you do so does the agent make sure you clean out all your cupboards don't leave anything in them first of all there's stuff in them that you may want to use when you first start the game so make sure you go through your cupboards anyway uh, especially in the kitchen cupboards as well uh, second though, again, as the month, first month goes on, the agent will start getting more and more picky and they don't give you any clue as to what they're getting picky on. So it's best just to get ready for it at the very start and make sure that you get these cupboards cleaned out. Now, the first thing you can do is obviously you won't have storage and anything set up in your bunker but take everything and then just put it into one cupboard here by your hatch. That way you don't forget where anything is. Then once later on, once you've gotten into your bunker setup and you've got some storage space, take everything out, start moving it into your storage in the bunker. That way, when the agent does get around to doing this part, you can actually have it all cleaned out already. Finally, I know everybody gets excited about the rocket and wanting to build it. Don't rush it. Let your trades dictate the rocket. The rocket silo will come along. The rocket will come along. And if you're working your trades really good, you don't have to worry about getting them resources together for the rocket. It's usually around 
days 15 to 20 is when you're going to probably have enough resources kind of starting to build up to getting into actually being able to do the first part of the rocket. Then this here being phase two of the rocket, again, let your trades dictate this because if you try and do it the other way, you're always going to be trying to spend too much money. You're always going to be running short and then you're going to fall behind on your food. And the next thing you know, you're going to get into a big mess. Let your trades do the talking. And now we're moving on to bunker tips. Now, the first tip I'll give you about bunkers is after the agent leaves, don't forget to uncover your hatch. Uh, and you, And I know everybody does it. You'll forget to uncover the hatch and then you'll try to go into the bunker and your prepper will be just standing there and you'll be thinking, what's wrong with my prepper? Why won't he go into the bunker? It's because you still got the hatch covered. Uncover the hatch, you're good to go. In the early days before you get the rockets, okay, you're going to only have two rooms. You're going to have the first room, which is where you'll actually do your crafting here on the bench. And your second room will be a farming room. Notice here in this case, this room is only two blocks. If you're doing the tutorial, it's going to want you to do five plots of soil, which actually requires three blocks. Don't make the mistake of making an extra large room. Still only make your two room block. Do only four pieces of dirt in this room. Put the fifth dirt right here beside your bench as a temporary parking spot for your farm. That way you can get rid of it later and then just use this room for crafting. And this room later is going to be used for storage when you advance after the rocket to moving your farm. So in this case, before the rocket, you should have two two block rooms. One's for your bench, one's for your farm. Now after the rocket silo has been built, you're going to move on a little bit more. Next, you're probably going to have an actual dedicated farming room. In this case, this room is three tiles big. But if you want to keep it as two tiles, that's perfectly fine as well. When you do get the rocket silo part and you get this done, you do get two blocks of uh, free upgrade tiles for this room, uh, this kind of uh, greenhouse room. You can craft a third block because this, this room is actually three squares. Uh, so you would have to craft a third one to upgrade this room. If you only have it two blocks though, it will only hold four soil. That's okay because you come with two blocks. The other thing you'll notice here is we are prepped for having power and water uh, and um, a furnace type storage. In this case, this is what we're going to be using after our 30 days, because as the 30 days approaches, we're going to have to get ready to do our own power setups, our, our own smelting for iron ore and metals and more stuff later on in our 30 days. So before the rocket, you'll have two rooms and after the rocket you'll probably move your farming expansions to uh, another room and now use this second room as a dedicated storage room so that way you can start cleaning out and holding more material this section is on the farming tips and this section is actually pretty small because you're only going to grow one thing and that's beets you're going to grow beets Lots and lots of beets in them first 30 days. Beets, beets, beets. Beets pay good. You're not eating the beets. No, no. You're selling the beets. You are going to do beets and you're going to sell them beets and you're going to just keep doing that. Your food is going to come from the forest and the berries. Don't grow food to actually eat it. It's a waste of time. Them first 30 days, you're going to need all the money you can get. And the best money maker in the early days, especially before you get into heavy mining after 30 days, is food. Food is the bomb. And even after 30 days, food will still be one of your biggest money makers, period. Jenny is going to be a big savior with all her cash. So 
beets are the thing that you're farming. You're not growing carrots. You're not doing any of that. The other thing, of course, is that until you actually get good water resources and collect water from outside, don't grow any more than four plots of land. Now, the reason that is, is because keeping in mind, uh, four plots of land uh, actually will <laughs> actually will be a handful already. Uh, you'll be very busy just keeping them four plots of land uh, going all the time. Second, four plots of land fits into a, a two square bunker like this real nice. And until you get the expanded greenhouse, those four plots of land will do really well. So the water uh, scenario will be well taken care of. You won't be overusing water by only having the four plots and uh, you also don't have to worry about having like, you know, extra plots sticking out all over the place. Even still, in your first 30 days, if uh, once you get your greenhouse up and running, you still might only do four plots. Now, keep in mind, yeah, if you're growing so many beets, Jenny will only buy so many a day. So don't think you're going to become an instant millionaire by growing like, you know, 400 beets a day. Uh, she'll only buy 10 a day and the fridge can only hold so much. So be careful of that. So the first two tips, work four plots and grow beets. This section is all about trading tips. And if the one thing I can tell you, this is probably the most important section. Trading drives the rest of the game. How fast you can build the rocket, how fast you can explore, how fast you can do things is all done by the amount of trading you can get in on a daily basis. The more trading, the better. When you first start out, you're only going to get one person to trade with, and that's Sergey. And Sergey, well, he doesn't care about the agent. He, he trades with anybody. He just, wants, he just wants your money. And in this case, uh, he is going to sell you the basic material. This is what he does. He, he finds you metal, he finds you wood, he finds you glass, and he sells it to you. Glass is the hardest material to come by in early game. It is really hard to find. So anything that takes glass to make, don't do it. Next, you'll get Nancy's house and the supermarket. Uh, of course, Nancy... Just buy stuff from you. The two things you want to sell Nancy all the time are shelves and tables. Don't bother with anything else, with the exception of chairs, but only if you have a lot of extra wood should you deal in chair trade. Everything else should only be shelves and tables. Don't bother with uh, wardrobes or any of that stuff. Wardrobes take way too much wood and actually take metal. And metal you need for other things. Forget it. Uh, chairs as a money return. Uh, the uh, three for seven. It isn't as good as the actual um, returns on shelves, which is uh, five wood for 15. And so is the table. Now that means it costs you $10 to buy wood from Sergey. And, 15, and, and you get $15 for that same five wood for a shelf and a table, which means you're making $5 a trade on that. You're not going to get that kind of good uh, trades with the chairs because they take three wood and you're only getting seven bucks back. All right? So it means to get $14, you're using uh, six wood. It's better to use the chairs uh, if you can find wood in the forest to do those. All right? Now... Nancy will handle your first days of trading, but Jenny should be soon on your list. Make sure you get Jenny and her mission done uh, with the wolves as soon as you can, usually by about day five or so. And at the same time, your first crop of beets should have been coming in already, which means by the time you're done getting Jenny set back up, she comes onto the trading map, and at the same time, you've got your first crop of beets being grown and delivered, and now you're making money with Jenny. Jenny will sell you beet seeds 
at $3 a bag. But she's buying them beets at $5 a piece. And she'll buy 10 at a time. So that's $50 every time you can sell her 10 a day. The beet seeds, they're only 9 bucks. She'll only sell you three bags a day. Uh, so in this particular case, you're making money with Jenny a lot quicker. The Huntress don't get into hunting. Don't do it. Hunting is bad. It's just bad. All right. Use the forest. Collect your berries. Stay on top of that. Once you get level three in the forest, find meat from the wolves and use that extra meat to supplement your berry and your smoothies. Don't get into hunting. This is all a waste of money. The Huntress is good, though, for when you do get to level three in the forest. Up in there, you'll get a lot of wolves, and you can trade them wolf pelts and other things to get money from the Huntress. She'll actually become like your second best money maker after Jenny, but not until you get into level three of the forest. So that is where trading is going to drive your needs. Afterwards, the Jetsons come on the scene. You'll get the gourmet. Uh, the gourmet is basically that. It's all about the gourmet. And the Jetsons will sell you unique items. Things like um, tapestry for textiles. And electronic pieces like telephones. This is where you're going to start getting your higher end items. This comes along in the late 20s of your first 30 days. And that's okay because you're not going to need them until you get into the deeper parts of the mine in the late 20 days. So with that, trading is the most important tip I can give you. Get into trading, make it part of your routine, work it every day, and let it help you develop your rocket, your exploration, and everything else you want to accomplish in the game. Now to work on some forest tips. On your first day, you're going to get into the forest, and when you do, you're going to just be able to get in and get back out. But the next day, when you come to the forest, once again, work on your first level only, and only work on collecting berries and the lever. Here on level 1-3 of your second day, keep working them berries, grab the berries, and chances are you're going to see a lever in the forest. You're also probably going to see a moving bush, or what they'll call the suspicious bush. Don't talk to it. Take the lever, take the berries, and head back home. That way, you have the lever to now fix level 2. When you're all done, on the next third day, fixing level 2, now you can go up to level 2 and get the berries up there. Finally, level 3 tips for your first 30 days. Make sure you still have that bat handy. One thing about level 3 is that you're going to get a few extra surprises. But those extra surprises come with big rewards because you'll be able to trade that stuff for more money. So, before you get into level 3, make sure your bat's good to go and prepare to get a little extra something for it. Ah, the mine and mine tips. Everybody loves the mines. It's places to explore, things to get, possible mining. It's all great. Except, don't rush it too fast. First mistake is, is that if you haven't got your trading set up really good, getting into the mine is going to be pointless anyway. Next, the next thing I would point out about mining is... After a while, of course, you're going to be getting into advanced mining and all that stuff. Incorporate that into your current trading routine. Don't try to replace your routine with advanced mining. Yes, you're going to get more money out of mining later on. That being said, uh, things cost more money later on. So you've got to have more money all around anyway make sure you incorporate mining into your routine don't replace your routine one of the first things you'll actually want to do with mining is not get all excited and try to get lower 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 as fast as you can 
make sure you take time to collect some resources here, then upgrade your homestead. In these uh, first levels of mine, you're going to find rocks on the wall. Pick up some of this stone, take it back, break it down, and upgrade your workbench. You're going to need materials from your workbench to deal with lower levels of the mine. So if you don't do that, you're basically cutting off your own feet. You're going to get down lower, you're not going to be able to find anything, you can't see anything, and it's because... You should have just grabbed some of the simple materials from your first level and actually upgraded your workbench before heading down even lower. Okay, so you're getting into the mid-20 days and you're now getting into the minus one of the mine and chances are you're going to get to visit Bob. Yay for Bob. When you talk to Bob, be sure to ask him all kinds of questions about the other material he has in the room. Specifically, keep an eye out for certain books on certain shelves. One of the things you're probably looking for is in this room. You just gotta look a little harder for it. Bob also sends you on a few quests of his own, and he'll give you some really good stuff a little later on. But, in your first 30 days, right now, just ask him about all the neat materials here. And just because you hover over one thing and it all lights up, doesn't mean that's including everything. Take time to go around and look at other things, because some of this stuff actually separates out. As you can see, once you get to minus two and beyond in the level, it's dark. You can't see anything. So, make sure you don't rush to get here. Take your time, get your routine set up, get your forest going, arrive at the mine, help Bob a little bit, he'll help you a little bit, then, after your first 30 days, start tackling the big stuff here. The biggest tip I can offer you is make sure that you get into routine and get set up. Use your mornings to do your routine. Eat, trade, and find more food then use your afternoons to do those extra things you want to do. Things like building rooms, or going to the forest for extra material, or starting to going to the mining. Do those things afterwards. That way, your routine takes care of your income, it takes care of your materials coming in, and you can use the extra time to focus on your gameplay. With that, this is Max, signing off on the tips and tricks of your first 30 days in Mr. Prepper, Good luck.